Friday night. This is a real stance for fastball. That's the official posture of fast walking. <laughs> Sorry, we got lost. <laughs> well, actually, we, we went to the wrong room. <laughs> Intentionally. <laughs> I said something very similar. Hi. Yeah. Oh my gosh, there's so many of you beautiful people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you are beautiful people. Thanks for having us. We're very excited to be here. I love DC. Uh, Everybody's so friendly and super diverse, and I could live here. <laughs> yeah, I, I feel like Funimation might get angry at us, but... <laughs> I mean, they just make us travel. <laughs> Hopefully. Anyway. How many other people's first time is it at Otakon? Yeah! Wow! My first time, too. Very exciting. Can we... It's my first time too. I should have raised my hand. Yeah. yeah. Um, who? Uh, show of hands. Who is? Who traveled to get here? Wow. Well, DC is pretty small. That's true. That's true. Really? Yeah, we got some locals in here too. I did just hear a figure that 93% of the people who live in the district are not from the district, so. I guess that makes sense. Yeah. I feel like that's true of Austin now. At this that country. is true of Austin, <laughs> Texas, where we live as well. <laughs> well, I guess we're here for a Mind Hero Academia panel, not a history and geography of Washington. That's true. <laughs> <channel. laughs> and I'm assuming you know who we are if you're here. I'm Elizabeth Maxwell. I voice uh, Midnight in my Hero Academia. <laughs> I'm Jason Lee Brecht, and I voice Dobby. Yeah, it's getting hot in here, isn't it? And I think that we were going to do it more or less like, oh, hey, look, the mic's already there. We're going to do a, a, a bit of a Q&A. Huh. And, um, you know, it is a My Hero theme, but if, if you have other questions about other titles that we've been in or other things, I'm don't totally be shy. Good. I'm going yeah, to make this an AMA. I mean, whatever. <laughs> as long as it's not, you know, super personal information. <laughs> like my social security number. <laughs> anyway, if you guys want to line hey, up or step what's up. What's your uh, mother's maiden name? Uh, Barbara Ruth. <laughs> Please don't hurt each other. <laughs> Just be kind when you line up. All right. Wow, what a lovely room. Hey, that's a good looking toga over there. Nice to go. Hey! Darling. Can you breathe? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So you're actually training when you do this. Yeah! <laughs> Alright. Go okay, ahead. So Whoa! Oh my Sorry. god! No, it's not you. There's just a monitor that's like We're not used recording to that. your voice like directly to me. We are totally used to not being able to hear or understand our questions. So it's interesting to thank you, sir. It's nice to be able to hear and understand. Just a surprise. <laughs> if you were to have a quirk based on like your own self and personality, what would it be? <laughs> it makes me, I don't understand what that's about. Um, I have two ideas. Um, I feel like my real life quirk is um, the earwig. I have the ability to get songs stuck in people's heads like nobody's business. Um, also, those who are close to me or those who record with me often know that I am a rather gassy lady. Um, <laughs> only from one end. I burp, I burp a lot. And so <laughs> I feel like I could like, imagine having a quirk that involves some sort of like either um, propulsion or like levitation through Stroke. the power Stroke. of belching. <laughs> <laughs> Mine is not nearly that, uh, that interesting. I, I, uh, I'm gifted when it comes to cooking proteins. Um, I can cook virtually any protein, and I mean it. Uh, even if I've never encountered it before, I will cook it perfectly. 
Yes, and he will cook it to the perfect temperature. That is correct. That is correct. And she can verify this. She's eaten a lot of my meat. <laughs> you guys! But, this is a PG-13 panel. <laughs> it's not even. What? <laughs> hey, right, you. Question answered. <laughs> All right. Yay! First question. How's it going, Lizzie? Lauren. Lauren. Oh, wait, you're Lauren. Wait, now you look like your picture again. Oh my god. You're freaking me out. You look different yesterday. I was in a different cosplay. Yeah. That's why. That's probably why. So, okay, Lauren. My question isn't my hero related. I know that's a little weird since I'm with Mariah, but um, my question's for, for Elizabeth. Um, because I'm a huge fan of the show. Um, how was your experience uh, recording for Isekai Quartet? <laughs> uh, I love chibi shows because I feel like they usually take jokes that are implied or rushed through in the, the normal anime and they just like, let's make an entire episode around like, how Alberto thinks that Shaltier stuffs her brassiere. And it's like, that's the entire plot of the episode. Um, so we had a lot of fun, uh, regardless to say, on, on that show. It was really fun because Alberto is already kind of like a bipolar, manic kind of character. And it's like with TV shows, you get to like turn the volume. Like she's at already like a pretty solid you know, eight or nine in Overlord, and in Izakai Quartet, you get to turn it up to like 11, so. <laughs> um, I also have a, Elizabeth, I have a picture for you. Do you mind if I bring it up to you? Oh, sure, thank you so much. Yeah, this is very kind. Thanks. Laura, ladies and gentlemen, Laura looks different every time. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much, I really appreciate that. Thanks for She's in the middle of one of her. Yes, sir. Okay, my question is, what if Midnight and Dobby were a couple in the show? <laughs> is, how old is Dobby? Is he young enough for her? <laughs> wow. I didn't realize that was a thing. Is that a thing? Yeah. yeah. He's 20-something. Yeah, yeah, I'd say he's 20-something. I'd say early, mid, yeah? <laughs> early? You think early? Not mid? Early? Yeah. I have no idea if I'm young enough. Um, at midnight likes her men like she likes her vino verde. It's very young and sparkling and fresh. <laughs> green. And green, not blue. <laughs> um, what if? Would it be like real life? Uh, I mean, it, on, on a certain level, if you ignore the like hero villain thing, which you know, is a deal. Uh, I feel like it would work because Midnight is very outspoken and Dobby is kind of like a man of few words. <laughs> and I feel like they wouldn't compete in that respect. Nope. And we can both, you know, we're both hot. <laughs> Who would wear the pants in the relationship? Midnight. Okay, flame retardant? <laughs> <laughs> have we answered your question, sir? I didn't tell you that. All right. I like this. This almost feels oh, like a game show. Hello. You look like Totoroki going to a prom. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! Success! How, they're at the prom episode. What the hell has that happened yet? <laughs> I don't know, but it should. It should happen. It should happen. I love that you went with Dude, Red, Midnight by the way. would totally nice. volunteer as a chaperone. <laughs> <laughs> Did you think about the split color dress? Um, this is actually just an old prom dress of mine, so I couldn't exactly split okay. it. Okay, fair enough, fair enough. What's hey. your question? Hi. Hi. My, name, my name is Kayla. Um, Hi, Kayla. I am a young, aspiring voice actress, so... My question to you is, how did you get to where you are? Because, like, where you are is where I'm trying to be. <laughs> um, oh, goodness. How do I condense this? Because it's an excellent question and, and one I feel like I could probably teach, like, an entire panel on. Um, 
for me, and every actor has their own kind of like story and their own way that they fell into this and have commenced pursuing it, continued to pursue it. Um, but for me, I guess I would call it like sheer force of will. <laughs> um, this was like something that I decided I wanted to do and that I was going to do and I wasn't gonna wait for somebody to kind of like allow me to do it. So I did a lot of research um, into demo reels and into um, genres and archetypes of voices and I hung out alone in my closet a lot and like played around with my voice and figured out like where can I go naturally and easily how can I you know change my voice and I also did a lot of research into what companies like were, were based within a certain radius of where I lived that I could see hiring voice actors and thankfully Funimation was one of them um, and I, I built myself up a demo reel and some like marketing materials and I basically just started kind of advertising myself to all these different companies over and over and over again in a something that I've deemed polite persistence um, <laughs> because a lot of times these companies they're dealing with so many people that if you reach out to them just once like you may get lost in the shuffle or they just may like be like, oh, that's interesting and then forget when it's lunchtime. Um, so I, I tried not to get discouraged by any no's or any lack of responses and I just kept plugging away at it and kept like, I emailed Funimation once a month for eight months before I got invited to come in and audition. That's literally my plan once I get the demo <laughs> real <started. laughs> And you know, it's like I always tried to like add a little something, you know, I'd tell them like, hey, this is what I've been up to, like this is a new accent I've learned, or a new class I've taken, or a job that I've booked, um, and would always include my demo reel, and would always be like, thank you for your time, and you know, I would still love to work with, for, you know, work with you if the opportunity ever arises. Um, so for me, it was just kind of like, a lot of people go through agents, and that's a totally legit, awesome way to do it as well. But I kind of was like, I'm going to go after the stuff myself and not wait for an agent to bring it to me. And I do feel that, that largely the agents are kind of out of the loop when it comes to the dub work. At least mine is. Um, and I feel like most of too. Uh, are not even in the game. <laughs> well, only recently has my agent been like, hey, if you want me to rep you for this stuff, I can. And I'm like, yeah, we... we we passed that about 10 years ago. Uh, I'm not giving you a commission on this anymore. I think I pretty much found it. Um, but my story is, is dramatically different than hers. Um, I literally was working on stage and in independent film in Austin, Texas, uh, almost 20 years ago, and went to a birthday party at a bar and happened to shut down the bar with a dude who was a director at ADV Films, who was Funimation's competitor at the time, and he wasn't happy with one of his lead actors, and he liked the sound of my voice. He's like, dude, I like your voice. You ever done any ADR? And I was like, only for, for my live action stuff. And he's like, well, why don't you come in Monday and see how you can do? And I did, and now it's almost 20 years later. Wow. So, so two very, very, like, opposite spectrum stories. Thank you. I'm very lucky. Uh, right place, right time, totally. But you still have to have the skill set. You still gotta have that, that, that base in acting. You still gotta have your chops. Um, and that's also why I always recommend, like, if you can always be going to an acting class or an improv class or something, because you never know when that opportunity is gonna pop up and you want to be ready. You want to be like at the peak of your game. And even those of us who've been at it a long time, many of us are still in classes. It's kind um, of like being an Olympic athlete. Indeed. Like you don't stop training or... These you know. classes will help you with auditions, which helps you with booking jobs, etc., etc., etc. Can you also do me one favor? What is it? You guys work for Funimation. Yeah. Do you know J. Michael Tatum? Yeah. Uh -huh. And <laughs> listen. <laughs> he is the entire reason why I jump, why like he jump started this dream for me. Um, can you just like tell him that hey, like 
that I really appreciate him and like thank him for jumpstarting my entire like career and dream. Absolutely. What's your name again? Uh, Kayla Adams. I met him once when I was like 12 and I freaked out about it and I almost threw up. <laughs> <laughs> totally natural reaction. <laughs> That's how I reacted when I met him too. <laughs> not, not him. But, I was more excited to meet his dog, I'm not gonna lie. His <laughs> dogs are so cute. Especially the new one, right? Yes. Yeah, it's ridiculous. But yeah, it's just cute. Absolutely. Of course, Kayla Adams. Kayla Adams, you remember, live in my memory. Remember my name when my demo reel Remember out. Kayla Adams' name! <laughs> Can you hear me okay? Yeah, oh, it's monitor, amazing. monitor. <clears throat> uh, my name is Phoenix, and I have a question for Midnight. It's a beautiful name. Thank you. You're welcome. You can still ask her the question. Yeah. <laughs> Midnight, what is your opinion on Mount Lady? <laughs> is there some drama? I have no idea. I think that she's a fantastic example of how um, uh, good makeup and good care can hide the worst of flaws. <laughs> She's quite good at it. Wow. Thank you. I love Jamie, okay? Hello, uh, I'm Tom. Hey, Tom. Uh, this Tom. is um, to Elizabeth. Uh, I'm actually a huge fan of Camp Camp. And who has not seen it? Um, I'm Rooster Teeth. Uh, it's a great show. And Thank Elizabeth you. Does Jamie. Um, so I wanted to know, um, what so is different about working with a group like Rooster Teeth versus Rooster Teeth working with like Funimation? Huh. Well, it's, it's inherently different because it's what we call prelay instead of dubbing. Oh, so, yeah. you know, we get to originate the characters, we record, and then the animators, you know, animate the flaps to us. So that inherently allows for quite a bit more freedom. Um, and I will say, I mean, I, I love anime dubbing. I mean, the animes that we get to be a part of are like absolute masterpieces. Um, but one of the cool things of working with a company like Rooster Teeth, which I'm sure Jason can attest to as well, is that having like the writers in the room with you while you're recording and having like the directors there, like it offers this level of like kind of creative freedom and, and mixing and input that we don't necessarily get when we're dubbing anime because we don't have access to the creators. So we can't say like, ooh, 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 I like what you wrote there, but what if we tweaked it this way and you know, and, and changed it to be like this? Even if it's Miles? Oh, Miles is like so flexible and like so open to things. And it's really fun because when you record with him, he does everybody else's voices. <laughs> I've, I've heard that. I want to get those extra tracks. Yeah, so it's just there's a, a level of collaboration that happens. Is that what he's doing? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> sorry. I haven't had as many sessions as sir. Yeah, yeah, sorry, I forgot. I did, I did work on day five, but yes, yeah. yes. Uh, but yeah, the, the collaboration is kind of like the main difference for me, uh, the access and the collaboration. Thank you very much. Absolutely. Of course. Tom, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Have a good day, Tom. It's from Camp Camp, I promise. <laughs> Cloud Pussies. Yeah, this Cloud is a My Hero pussies. panel, baby. Huh? No. <laughs> What's your question? Hello, Chan. Hi. What's your name? Oh, my name. You don't want to know my name. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you don't have to give it, but that doesn't mean we don't want it. My name is Maritza. 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 Qué bueno. Thank you. I have two questions. So one mainly for Elizabeth. So I uh, wanted to know, um, first off, like, how did you prepare for your role as Uochan or Uotani from Fruits Basket? Because that's a big role and a lot of things to fill there. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, I I was not unfamiliar with Fruits Basket, but I hadn't watched it before. So I was lucky in that it was made long enough ago that I could go back and actually watch at least parts of the sub because, you know, with simul dubs now, with how quickly they're putting out the dub next to the sub, we don't always have uh, the ability to do that kind of research anymore. Um, so I did watch a, a decent chunk of the sub before we started recording. And after that, it's really a lot about just trusting your director 
You know, it's like I, I watched what I could. I got a sense of what the other actress had, had done with the character. The previous English? Or just yes, English? yeah, the previous English. Um, I watched a little bit of both, both the sub and the older dub. And after that, it's, um, I, I love all of the directors at Funimation, but I have, through working with her, developed a particularly close relationship with Caitlin. And she's really good at kind of helping bring the inner life of a character to you, to kind of explain like, you know, this is their arc, this is what makes them tick, and then give you the freedom to like move around within that. So, I mean, for, for me, I did what research I could, but a lot of it was, you know, relying on Caitlin to give me that context <clears throat> and then doing the best job I could with what I had. Okay, prepare yourself. There's a lot yeah. to deal with. <laughs> Stop uh, it. I've already I'm cried at like every episode. Yeah. <laughs> the last these ones were pretty duo based. Anyway, so my second question is for both of you. Uh, thank you, Jason, for coming. By the way, love you. Okay, from Darker Than Black. Hey, anyway. thanks. That's my favorite. <laughs> great. Yeah. great. Electric Batman. Yeah. <laughs> so my question for both of you is: Was there any other role, whether you're involved with the series or not, or if you're, yeah, you're involved in the series or not, if there's a role that you're like, oh, I wish I had that character, or I wish I got to play this role or do this part, be involved in this story? Something that's story. already happened, or something. Something's already happened, but you weren't unable to. You weren't able to be a part of it. And you wish you were. If that makes sense. That makes sense. Okay. Um, I know what it is for you. Oh, you oh, do? Yeah. Well, then answer it for me. <laughs> oh, well, Wolverine, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Doesn't he look like a Wolverine? You know, they are looking for a new Wolverine. Yeah! I'm pretty sure I'm the right age. But he has a tattoo. And I already have metal in my bones, so... <laughs> And that's the joke. Yeah, no, I mean, I literally was in a motorcycle accident and had metal in my bones. Oh, okay. My right side. Um, yeah, yeah, no, it, that's real. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> She's right. Um, I like the Deadpool dude, too. And I also was, um, there was a Blade Runner anime that was, I don't know who ended up with the property. Was it Sentai? Was it Sentai? Yeah. Well, I was upset about that. Because <laughs> I don't work with them, or maybe I should, but uh, Blade Runner is what made me want to be an actor. So oh. I very much was hoping to be a part of that and hoping that Funimation would get that property and talk to Justin Cook about it. And he was like, yeah, man, I hope, I, I hope we get it too. And it didn't happen. And that's cool. I'm sure it's, it's beautiful. I haven't watched it. Uh, not because I'm mad. <laughs> okay, maybe I'm a little mad. Anyway, that's, that's my and our answer for me. <laughs> uh, this is a bit, uh, apologies if anybody came to my panel yesterday, this is a bit of a repeat, but one of my favorite animes of all time is Escafloni. <laughs> and so, um, you know, obviously that, that <laughs> anime was dubbed when I was a kid, so I totally missed the boat on that. Um, but the funny thing is that Not I was one. actually working <laughs> at Funimation when they for auditioning and casting the redub, and I don't know how I missed it, but I did. I Aww. missed it too. I think it's because we don't live in Dallas. Yeah, that's what maybe. I think. That's, I think that's why we were not included in that. But like, I was at Funimation when I found out that it had been fully like cast and they were moving forward with it, and it was. I, I literally had like one of those real like I sank to my knees on the floor and was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I mean, like Jason said, not that I, like, I, once something's been cast, it's very hard for me to imagine, like, anybody else being that role, so I would never want to take a role away from somebody, but I would have loved to have been involved in that redub of Escaflone in some way, shape, or form. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Thank you, Marita. It's working. It is working. Hey, hey, Elizabeth. Hello. Good to see you again. Well, good to see you, too. All right. <laughs> My name's Kayla Baskerville, in the alias Cheesy Goodbite. I uh, okay. draw sometimes. <laughs> and yeah, plan to work on the anime industry in terms of drawing and animating. Very cool. We, we always need talented animators. Thank you, thank you. So I just want to say one question for the both of you. Mm -hmm. What is your current favorite video game if you're actively playing video games at the current time? Yeah. My current favorite video game. Um, 
I just, I, I love uh, like the kind of like choose your own adventure story based mm -hmm. games. Um, I just finished Detroit Become Human. Yeah. Oh man, the acting. Huh? Yeah, Joseph's. Um, I played it. On, I played my best friend's copy of it. Um, but I was blown away by the acting in that game. Like I, it, I was like, this is. Oh my gosh, this is like another level. Um, so that was when I just finished. And then, I know I'm really late to the game, but I just started Persona 5. <laughs> and um, I am pretty obsessed. I actually like have considered like unplugging my PS4 and like taking it with me when I travel. <laughs> I haven't. Um, Ian has a way, he shrunk his down. Yeah, we can talk later. <laughs> He's got some device. I don't know. He's a scientist. I have one question for Elizabeth that I forgot to ask yesterday. Um, have you had any uh, prior knowledge to the Shin Megami Tensei slash Persona series before you were cast? I didn't, actually, which is utterly baffling to me because I've I've been a gamer since I was five. I had the original Sega system. Must be nice. And, uh, <laughs> Um, <laughs> older brother is also. Awesome. I have the original Pong. That's <laughs> 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 where we were watch them. We had a black and white TV. You guys don't mind if I come up and shake your hands, do you? No, that's cool. Well, hold on one second. Let's let's finish the question. Jason hasn't gotten the same no, favorite no, video game yet. I just want to see if you will allow me to shake your hands. Absolutely. Um, but yeah, basically, long story short, I was an RPG or growing up. That was always my favorite type of game to play, and. Yet somehow I completely was missed for the Persona series. I'm not sure how, but I did, and so I heard of it, but had never played one when I was, you know, invited to. Persona three and four are actually pretty popular. Yeah, yeah pretty good. Okay, yeah. What, what about you, baby? Are you playing any games right now? Um, I'm still stuck in a tree with my horse in Red Dead Redemption Two. <laughs> <laughs> You can get to a lot of places with that big horse, but man, sometimes you can't get out of those places. <laughs> um, I'm not super tech savvy. I'm, I'm pretty good with horses in real life, but um, yeah, my horse is stuck <laughs> on a mountain. Uh, the other one that I've been playing recently is not a new game. It is an old game that was re-released, remastered, or reconfigured for the Switch, and that is Rolling Thunder, which is an old uh, scrolling arcade game that I liked to play a lot when I got to go to the arcade when I was a kid. When I was a kid, I wasn't allowed to watch TV unless my father was watching it. My dad raised me, my dad's from Chile, my dad's kind of crazy. Um, and the consequence is I didn't have game systems other than the Pong that he literally found at a garage sale that was plugged into a black and white TV. Uh, and I'm not complaining. I love the way I turned out. and. Gracias, papi. But, um, pero, yeah, you know, I, uh, when I would go to friends' houses who had regular gaming systems, I was, I did not win. <laughs> Unless it was Pong, which it never, it never, it was never Pong. <laughs> anyway, those are my two, those are my two guilty pleasures right now. Okay, thank you. That's how I was with Pop Tarts. My mom wouldn't buy nice to meet you. My mom wouldn't buy junk food. Oh, Pop Tarts? Yeah. We didn't even have sugar. We had no sugar. I mean, not any sugar. Not any kind of sugar. Anyway, not to compete. I think if we were competing, I'm, I'm, I'm losing? <laughs> anyway. No, I would just, I would go to friends' houses and I would like literally like have Pop Tarts for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. <laughs> oh, no, I'm familiar with the hoarding of the snacks. Like, oh, Twinkies. <laughs> turn their head. I will put a bunch of them in my pocket. <laughs> no, that's not a good idea with Twinkies. No, it doesn't work out so well. <laughs> Although they throw really well, like a Nerf football. It's crazy. <laughs> anyway. A not unsimilar consistency. <laughs> but I digress. What is your question? Okay, hi. Um, my name's Amory. Hi, Amory. Okay, so I have two separate questions for you. Um, first one is for Dobby. So. Oh, right, okay, so, so in the fandom there's a lot of names, like Deku, he has names, like Todoroki, Half to Half, Icy Hot. Are there any, like, specific nicknames that your character has that are your favorite? Mine is either Stable Face or Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Staple face? Really? <laughs> Seriously? No, I mean, I know, I know why. 
I mean, I'm not gonna take offense, because I'm not really him. I mean, staple face? <laughs> Seriously? It's not Gabby, for sure. Uh, I don't know, there's nothing about blue flames? I don't know. King of the emo boys? <laughs> I take that. I take that. I take King of the Evil Boys. That's cool. I mean, he's the hottest burn victim there is, right? <laughs> he is, but he's still attractive. That's all I mean. I, I'm not. I'm not calling out any burn victims. I've been burned before. I'm sure most of us have. <laughs> anyway, I'll, I'll shut up now. <laughs> Festival episode, I bet it was like a lot of fun with your lines. What was like your experience? Like, like, that really turns me on. <laughs> yeah, uh, I don't think that I ever left a recording session with Colleen for this show without like my face hurting from laughing and also being quite red <laughs> from blushing. Um, yeah, I mean, I know that there are a lot of other, like, funny moments and funny characters in this show, but I've always appreciated that, like, Midnight is a character that basically just brings levity to anything that she's involved in. Um, and the sports festival was pretty fun, but I have to say, I think my favorite part with her was the classroom episode where they, like, she helped them pick their hero name. Because <laughs> it's like, her logic is just so... Like, sometimes it makes sense, and then sometimes it just veers off into territory that I don't fully <laughs> comprehend. Um, but, yeah, she's, her, her lines were, there were moments where, like, it'd come up on the screen and we'd be about to record, and I'd be like, wait, what? Cully? Is this real? And she's like, yeah, just say the line. <laughs> Can I shake your hand? Sure. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Thank you. You're up, brother. Greetings. Sorry. Well, wow. uh, apologies. Uh, first, hi, my name is Daniel. Hi, uh, Daniel. Hi, Daniel. Thank you. But uh, we should make this like a meeting, right? Like a, like a proper group therapy session. Like, <laughs> hi, my name is Daniel. I'm trying to meet you. Sorry. I'm, I just need to be quiet. Hey, I mean, you're here for a question, Daniel. What's your question? A few. Uh, but three, two quick tiny ones and one more specific one because okay. there's something else to say. Um, I have a question for Hey, because I think you mentioned Batman. What is your, uh, Hey, what is your honest opinion?